Hey guys, welcome back to another video about Luminar Neo. In this one, I am digging in specifically to the Relight AI tool. I've been using this tech demo version of Luminar Neo for a while now. Just been testing out different photos and that sort of thing. And I wanted to walk through some of the results to give you an idea of what this Relight tool, uh, Relight AI tool can do for you. I think it's cool, it's powerful, it's gonna be really useful. I will say, I don't think I'm gonna be using it by itself. It's not enough to be able to do everything I want to do to a photo, but it certainly is gonna help. Let me show you. Here's a, a cityscape. I'm gonna give you a few different examples, like a cityscape, a landscape, a portrait, stuff like that. And as I said, if you didn't see my last video uh, showing off this tool, I recommend checking that out first because this is a tech demo version. It's just got the, uh, the dust spot removal and the power line removal in the erase tool, and then it's got Relight AI. So it's a piece of Luminar Neo. It's not feature complete, it's not performance optimized, the UI is not locked, it's just a tech demo. So I um, just wanted to clarify that and kind of make that clear up front. So you got multiple sliders here. It's, as the name implies, Relight AI is about adjusting the light. So if I wanna adjust the light in the near portion of the photo, I'm gonna go to 100, and you're gonna see it gets a little bit of this kind of weird where everything else is still dark, but you've got this small sliver in the, like the bottom you know, quarter of the photo. And that's where the depth comes in because the depth by dragging that to 100, I'm basically moving that line up of what it considers near and what it considers far. The thing that I like about this, if I show you the before, is the foreground uh, up to and including the buildings is fairly dark, the sky is fine. I let go, the sky hasn't changed. I haven't touched brightness far, but the cool thing is, is that depth they're using their 3D depth mapping technology here, and it's basically recognizing, it seems like to me, the line of the buildings. And so once again, before, if you will, is things are kind of dark, and now they're lighter, but the sky wasn't affected. So a way that I think of Relight AI is like an intelligent, adjustable gradient. So if you had a previous version of Luminar, I think it was four, that had adjustable gradient. I love that tool, use it all the time. But you could stick a gradient in there, which by definition, the adjustable gradient was a straight line. You could adjust the gradient zone and tilt it. This is operating like that. It's allowing you to pick that gradient. However, it's intelligent. It seems to be masking in and including the buildings, but um, even though it's a crooked skyline, let's call it, it's not, um, it's not getting confused by that. So I love that, it's working really well. So I think that's very cool. And of course you've got warmth near and far if you wanted to adjust temperature. And if I wanted to adjust the brightness of the sky, I could do so, uh, or I could reduce the uh, intensity of it and darken it. Maybe I'll lighten it a little bit, but I think that's made a great impact on the photo in terms of balancing the light. And then you could go in and do things like Accent AI because that one's a bit more of a kind of what I call a blunt instrument. It just comes in and it hits it. It balances the light and it does a great job and I love it. But it's also adjusting contrast and color, things like that. This tool is just managing the light. So if you remember Smart Tone from previous iterations of Luminar, this is like an AI-based smart tone, smarter tone, if you will. Anyway, that's the first photo. I wanted to show you how that's working and show you that it's recognizing that skyline, even though it's super like crooked and lots of different lines and all that. I realize there are dust, dust spots in the photo. I can erase those. I've shown you that. Nothing new to show there. Let me get you another photo, though, and continue showing Relight AI. Now, this one's kind of a landscape, but in this case, what I wanted to do is show you that um, so far in all my demos, I'm dragging these sliders to the right. You can drag them to the left too. I actually want to darken the uh, foreground, if you will, like the land and the water, as well as the sky, but I wanna darken them in different amounts. And so brightness near, I'm gonna pull that down and you can see kind of what that's doing. I'm gonna drag the depth up. So I'm bumping up the, uh, you know, kind of moving that line, if you will. And then the brightness far, I'm gonna pull that down but I'm gonna pull that down, you know, not as much as the foreground. So maybe something about like that. Actually, I might pull the brightness near up a little bit and maybe the brightness far. I just kinda of gotta, I'm just playing around to be honest. So something like that where I've used them in different amounts. Again, I can use warmth near or far, which will correspond to my near and far up here as defined by the depth slider, right? So that's a cool way that you can take a photo that's too bright all across the image and adjust it with brightness near and far and the depth adjustment in order to balance the light more accurately. And then again, you might come in and go to the light tool and get the highlights and the shadows 
contrast, temperature, whatever else it might be. And so I kind of see myself using Relight AI as one of the first things that I do, and then go back and hit the image with some of the more traditional tools like the light tool or maybe Accent AI. Just the way I'm thinking, at this point, I don't have all those other tools in Neo, so I can't really do those experiments, but that's how I'm thinking because this is really good at allowing you to isolate that near and far, adjust the depth, adjust the light in both, get your base image uh, set, if you will, in terms of light distribution, and then go to town with the other tools. Let me show you another one. Okay, here's a full-on landscape. The other one was like shot here in Austin, kind of a landscape, but anyway, this is a full-on landscape from Canada. I'm gonna start with brightness near. I'm gonna go to 100. I'm gonna do depth of 100, and I like that. Brightness far, I'm gonna go a little bit because it's helping me to get those mountains a little bit higher. But as you can see, this is where, like in the last image I was talking about, I'm gonna wanna come back and adjust the highlights and pull those down or use super contrast, which is also gonna help me make some adjustments in the photo because it allows you to isolate the things like the highlights and the midtones and the shadows. So just another example of how I can use this in combination with other tools, or at least a verbal example since I don't have those other tools yet um, here in Neo, but starting out like that, and I'm currently like that, done a great job of helping me balance a light, brighten that foreground, brighten the sky a little bit, and then you can come in with other tools to kind of finish off that lighting adjustment without just going to Accent AI, which I think, you know, probably a lot of people have used just to brighten their photos in Luminar AI, but keep in mind, Luminar AI, or excuse me, um, Accent AI and Luminar AI just does a whole lot more than brightening. It does other things that you may or may not want to impact. This is beautiful because it's just a lighting tool. I think it's working really well. Now let's look at a portrait. Okay, here's a shot I took at a, uh, a portrait event here in Austin. So brightness near, this is interesting. I think uh, you will appreciate this. I'm gonna go ahead and drag brightness near. And if you look at it, it's brightening her. Even though if you remember in the other photos, it was starting at the bottom and just moving its way up, but it's intelligent. It's apparently recognizing subjects because it knows she is the subject of this photo. And even though it's brightness near, it's really, I think it's recognizing the depth of the photo and that she's near and that the fence and stuff behind her are far and therefore they're not being brightened. I think that's really interesting because if you look at the before and after, it's basically isolating her and brightening her, which is exactly what I needed to do to this photo. So it's kind of like the face light that's in Luminar AI and the portrait tools except this is the whole body in this case. And I've done this on several portraits and it's worked the same way each time. I can't say it's gonna work that way in every portrait, but I think that's really interesting. And then brightness far, if I start dragging that, you'll see some of the background picks up, but not a lot. But in this case, I actually might wanna isolate her a little bit further and darken that background because I don't really care. It's all blurred anyway, because I shot this at F, I think this was my 50 millimeter 1.8, shot at 1.8. Um, if I drag depth and go to the right, you can see it's pulling in a little bit more of the foreground element, which is the edge of that ring light. Um, and if I go left, it's kind of darkening that. So I kind of like that. The other thing I want to point out is, let me zoom in to like 50. Um, and that, actually, you know, 50 is too much. Let's go to 25. And there you go. You can see her. Let me move to about there. Let me show you the dehaloing because this dehaloing is really t built to help you, especially for portraits, to kind of wrap the light around someone. So there's not a lot of haloing here, but I just wanted to zoom in a little bit and show you. It defaults to 30, but if I go to zero, I don't know if you can see what's happening versus if I go to 100. So at 100, it's a little bit darker around the edges, and at zero, it's a little bit lighter around those edges. So I don't know how well you can see that. You can see it a little bit around the edge of her hair. So if you look up here, you can kind of see that there is a little bit brighter there and there it is a little bit darker. And also her right hand as it's up here on her shoulder, you can kind of see that there it is a little bit uh, darker and there it is a little bit brighter. So that dehaloing, and I'm gonna go back to the default, I think it's fine in this case, is helping to kind of wrap the light around the subject which again, I think it's interesting that it's recognized her as a subject uh, because that's what's near. So it's not just operating like a gradient filter that starts at the bottom and you use the depth to move it up like in the cityscape and landscape photos. In this case, it's recognizing the object, which is the person, as being nearby. Uh, so that's the, where the brightness near is being applied. I think that's cool. And then warmth, maybe you wanna add a little bit of warmth to her, I'm not sure. You know, uh, maybe uh, maybe cool off some of the background. I don't know. I'm just kind of making that up. I don't really like the cooler background. But anyway, 
I thought that was interesting around the portrait tool and how the brightness near is isolating that subject. Again, 3D depth mapping, it seems to be human aware, which I love, and it's gonna come in really handy for you guys. So that was it. I wanted to walk through a few more examples of Relight AI as I continue to dive into this. More information coming. If you haven't yet, please hit subscribe, uh, follow along in the channel. And by the way, I've got a link down below as well to my newsletter. If you wanna join my newsletter, which goes out roughly about once a month, sometimes a little bit more often, feel free to do that and you get some freebies when you join anyway. And by the way, if you haven't bought Neo, get it at a link down below, which is an affiliate link. They pay me a referral commission if you use that. And if you don't use it, that's cool too. I'm gonna to be here making videos about Neo because it's gonna be awesome. I'm looking forward to it. So thanks for watching my friends. I will see you guys really soon. Take care of yourselves and until then, adios.